What's going on everybody, Andy Lurie out here, and today I want to bring you guys another video and kind of explain the thesis on Bitcoin and why the price is moving and why you shouldn't really be concerned about that and the really the bigger picture of what cryptocurrency and what Bitcoin can provide to you as a sovereign citizen of the United States, a sovereign citizen of another country, third world country, first world country, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, Bitcoin is for everyone, whether you're someone in Israel that's fighting against the Hamas and you want to be able to have financial freedom against the Israeli government, or you're Hamas and you don't want to feel that the Israeli government has control over your finances, your, over your destiny. In a world where we are going more towards digital and more towards efficiency and being able to use our money more effectively, it's going to be a little bit harder for governments to kind of control and have possession over what we owe to them. And not a lot of people are going to understand what that means. And probably not a lot of people understand what I mean right now when I say that. But eventually time will do and time will show that the government is just going to make the middle class poorer, they're going to make people like me and you not able to progress financially. You can see this in the current economical status of the United States. People that were baby boomers had a golden era of just wealth and they had just the utmost amount of ways to accumulate wealth through taxation, through uh, exploitation of workers. And I don't want to say that one company does one particular thing or one person is the reason why we're in this particular situation, but it can all go back to one thing, which is greed. The greedy people on the very top of the ladder are wanting the lower people on the ladder to work harder than they can. And that's going to show really effectively right now in our current economical status. We have way too much debt from the people that were essentially 50 to 70 currently right now which are essentially baby boomers that are kind of sucking the wealth out of the lower and middle class and preventing them from being able to escalate themselves now you can say well you know that's why you go to college you get a higher paying job but it shouldn't really be that way as someone that lives inside the united states you shouldn't have to be forced to become a doctor or become somebody that is a ceo or entrepreneur you should be able to have control of your own finances and it's often effective whenever people see on the news that someone gets their assets frozen. It happens more often than you think, whether you're getting audited from the IRS because you didn't pay your due diligence to the government, which is whether you want to be taxed or not, where you think it's fair to be taxed. It's going to become a very slippery slope for the United States government as we continue to print more debt. The reason why it's going to become a more slippery slope is because of the reason that in order to pay off that debt, we're going to have to borrow more money against it. Because right now, we're not really producing a whole lot inside the United States. Tell me what is being produced inside or manufactured that we can sell for a profit other than third-party services and services such as software. Now, software is not going to be the thing that's going to make us rich again. I can guarantee you that. But it's going to be something that we're able to accumulate ourselves or be able to hold ourselves. And you can see this with Bitcoin. People are buying more and more Bitcoin every single day. The people on the very top are buying more Bitcoin. You can see the amount of, of exchanges that are selling to these private individuals essentially at pennies on the dollar compared to what you can buy it for right now. Because they know what the move is. They know that Bitcoin is digital sovereignty, essentially digital gold. Now, right now, we are currently facing probably one of the largest economic turmoils of the end of an era. The era of people that are baby boomers that were investing all their money into the stock market. People that were printing money to invest into the stock market. Now, we can see this right now with the S&P 500 and the way how Bitcoin is no longer essentially reflecting the price of the S&P 500. We're more or less coming more of a commodity or more something that people are going to want to desire in hard times. Now, when hard times come, those that are becoming prepared for it, such as the doomsday preppers where they buy gold and silver, are going to be doing pretty well. People that own land are going to be doing pretty well. And right now, the people that own stocks or people that own you know, companies, they're going to lose their value in them because, one, people don't have any more purchasing power because the taxation of their money is getting sucked up from the government to pay off Social Security or paying off government debt. And right now, what you're seeing right now is the Fed is printing more money to buy more treasury bills from the government. So essentially, the government's just infinitely making more money and an uh, infinite money glitch, right? We all know what infinite money glitches are. We've probably have done it before in video games, but if you just create more and more money, you're essentially, sorry, you're essentially going to de-inflate the value of your current money. We saw this in a game called GTA, where in the early stages of GTA, you could buy a car like a Lamborghini for like $150,000, right? But now every single car that they release, it's like $1.2 million, $3 million for in order for you to buy the newest edition of the cars. And this isn't because of GTA's, you know, the money is more valuable or the money is less valuable. It's because people cheated money into the game and they deflated the actual currency of GTA. 
Now, this took over 10 years to do when GTA first came out in 2013, but we can see this that, you know, if you play the story mode, it's kind of easy to buy a car in story mode, but if you go play online, it's kind of expensive. And in order for you to get ahead in that online world is you have to do a lot of crime, you have to do a lot of cheating, and you have to do a lot of you know, around and negating barriers that are being put up. So essentially, GTA can kind of be put into a World War perspective of we are slowly becoming more uh, anarchy, essentially. People are essentially wanting to get ahead, and they can't get ahead financially because of taxation, because of their money being worth less, because when they go to the store, they go buy bananas, and then the next week, bananas are twice the price. And in a world where we live in, it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to get out of the situation by ourselves or be able to get out of the situation from printing more money or being able to invest our money into something else because everything is so out of price for someone like myself as a new generation coming into the world. And so starting out, I saw that you know when I was a kid that 2008 happened and we, my parents almost lost their house. That's not fair to someone that just wants to live inside America, right? I grew up in a situation where people are not able to afford their bills growing up. That's not fun. I mean, you should be able to live your life with a family and kids and not have to worry about financial stresses. You should be appreciative that you're able to live in a world that's safe and not corrupt. Now, it's getting to the point where more and more people are falling below the poverty line and more and more people are, I mean, I want to say less people now are able to get ahead or be able to make a lot of money and, you know, sustainably make money. So with this, I kind of want to tell a lot of people, and maybe you may not realize it now, but maybe you'll realize it in the future as, you know, it gets worse or things progress longer, but people are going to go to safe havens like gold and silver. People are going to safe havens like land, and the best type of safe haven that you can go to is something that can't be touched, something that can't be taken away from you, and something you can self-custody, which is Bitcoin, Litecoin, and any other cryptocurrencies currently available. Now, you can use something on the Ethereum blockchain, but you can still get your assets frozen from every single person. We saw this in hacks where people would steal money from dirt from certain blockchains, and essentially they would get their funds frozen, which I don't think Ethereum is going to be the way how we'll be able to have you know, the liquidity for ourselves to be able to get richer, but I think Bitcoin will be do that. There's no such thing as an account that got frozen on Bitcoin. Now, there's accounts that are watch listed that you can't exchange with because they are known as banned addresses, but those are deemed by the community. They can still send their Bitcoin to whoever they want versus Ethereum where your assets essentially get frozen. And in a world where Ethereum is kind of being pushed as this best new thing, the oil to money, I think people are going to want to control it. And how they're going to be able to control it is by proof of stake. If you have lots of money, which is the U.S. government, you'll print money and you'll exchange your fake dollar imaginary bills for more Ethereum and you'll be able to control the network. Same thing with Bitcoin. In order for you to buy more Bitcoin, you have to buy more miners. Well, what's that going to do to the price of miners for someone that can't afford a miner? You know, a price of a miner is roughly about $1,000 to $15,000, $20,000 to pick up a Bitcoin miner. And so it's not very accessible to the common person, which is okay by me there's reasons why it's more industrial for you to be able to mine bitcoin same thing with gold you can go pan for gold and you know maybe it might not be worth your time or maybe it may not be the most efficient process but you can still do it and i kind of want to tell you this too the reason why gold is maybe not the best asset for you to put your money into is because they can control what price gold is they can control the supply and they can control how much gets mined how much gets distributed throughout the world and the reason why i know this is because if you look at how much gold is being produced, it becomes more abundant. And people don't understand that gold is not a finite resource. Same thing as silver. Silver is not a finite resource. You can go mine more of it, and there's more on asteroids, and there's actually more money in gold and silver currently than there is in Bitcoin. And so it's something that can't be easily manipulated, something that can't be easily mined, or something that can't be easily taken from you. It's going to show its resiliency as something that someone would want to hold long term or something that someone would want to invest in long term because of those principles. And as those principles are coming more more apparent, it's going to be coming more likely that people are going to want to invest their money in Bitcoin. And in a world where people are actually banning you from being able to purchase from buying Bitcoin on exchanges like JP Morgan in the UK or government saying that you're not going to be able to transact with it, it kind of shows you a bigger picture of Who's really in control? Is it you that's in control of your money or is it the government that's in control of your money? And so with this, I want to tell you guys, if you buy a little bit of Bitcoin, you'll be a little bit more free than you were before. So with that, I want to tell you guys to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.